So, ah, but this one made me laugh a little bit. This one made me laugh a little bit. This one had pizza balls. Anyway. <laughs> It did have pizza balls. It did have pizza balls. And I'm like, yeah, is this, is this funny? Is this humor? Is, is this a joke? Hey, guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where we are back to talk more Marvel. Last time we talked about the TV shows, which yes. we're not covering, and we covered it more than most <laughs> of the stuff it, I Yeah, about. that was going to be like, here's a five minute discussion. <laughs> and and then that's why it like... became a two parter. Um, but what about stuff that you're excited? So that was, and we're talking about the past of Marvel. What about the future of Marvel yes. at this point, Lee? Is there anything that you're excited about? I am super excited for them to dive more into the Spider-Man mythos. He has such a giant... Wait a minute, someone's excited about <laughs> Spider-Man? I know, crazy, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> what Blow sort of... Oh, man, really, no, coming like, to GT Live for the spiciest of takes with film I, criticism. I think the fact that Sony has their grip on so much of that franchise yeah. limits what Marvel Studios can do with that character sure. and his cast. Yep. And that means that they're really going to dive into the second stringer mm -hmm. Spider-Man characters in a way that I don't think that they've gotten a spotlight before. Ooh, that's interesting, yeah. Like, uh, and also, you know, they're going to introduce Miles Morales at some point. Of course, yeah. Uh, I w I'd like to see a live-action Black Cat. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the oh, live-action... Right, I feel like Black Cat has been just waiting there on the sidelines, being like, please yeah. put me in, coach. And, like, she's the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true! She's the perfect character, too, for this, I assume, because they're going to make... Four or five Spider-Man trilogies. Oh, they will make it yeah. until <laughs> Tom Holland is dead and buried. I assume this is going to be the dark, gritty trilogy. Uh, you know, with Venom. Sure. The Venom suits now in the MCU now. Sure, why not? Well, he, he wasn't. He, oh no, he is. That's yeah, right. Because that they did leave the little, of, yeah. the little goo at the um, end in, in the like most anticlimactic crossover. And again, anticlimactic crossover. It's like. Oh, he got teleported yeah. into the universe. Up oh, and now he's literally <laughs> siloed to a bar and he's out. He didn't interact with anyone except for he yeah. left a little bit of the suit. Great. <laughs> because why not? That breaks the rules, but who cares? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> sure. It's okay. cool. Rule of cool. Maybe the, maybe the little gel ball doesn't touch anything and it just dies. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that that could be yeah without mary jane in the mix yeah exactly black cat like, and felicity and like absolutely awesome. uh yeah there are a ton of really just fun spider-man characters because that's been marvel's biggest character for the longest time right that the movies never touched on yep. and now well they've burned through their sinister six villains it'd be really weird if <laughs> and otto octavia showed up now yeah it's true I, i'm interested to see where that goes i also think their spe we mentioned this very briefly last time, but their special presentation format yeah. has so much potential to oh do my gosh, really yeah. cool stuff. Yep. Like, and there are a bunch of smaller characters that would do really well in that format. So, well, you're, like, so you're telling me you're not hype for the marbles, then? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, like, at this point, Marvel has a lot of course correcting to do, and it'll take them probably a good two years to course yeah, correct, least. right? Like, like if you look at the movies <clears throat> that were in production and how long it takes to kind of re-steer a ship after decisions yeah. have been made, unless you turn it and you break the whole thing, which, you know, we've seen done with DC in the past, you know, in, it, to do a smooth transition and, like, be like, well, these story decisions aren't making sense anymore. Like, let's move here. It's going to take you two years. So, like... Yeah. yeah, so it's 2023, so the next two years, 2025... I, I've heard whispers that yep. they're spl splitting up Secret Wars into two movies. Really? Which okay. would make sense. Yeah, that's, sure. That's a lot in that's to a, handle in one movie. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, so, I mean, it could it could be the next three years yeah, of this right. phase. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, I think it's going to take a, a full another phase, really, to, like, course correct in a way in that way. So, which which means that, you know, I'm, I'm curious what DC has in store. You know? Yeah. that Like, I will say... and And to be fair... The connected universe stuff, fine. I like. I really like the side projects. The what is it? The DC, not extended universe. The DC, Elseworld. Elseworld. Yeah. The Elseworld yeah. projects, where it's just like, hey, here's here, the wor weird thing. Yeah, <laughs> here's a cool character. Let us do a cool thing with a cool character, untied to literally anything yeah. else. 
great. You know, if that's what it takes to get good stories again, awesome. You know, like, if, if it's not burdened down by, like, here's the next ten years worth of movies, <laughs> so make sure that all the cameos are great. Let's get to a point where people are just com- being able and comfortable yeah. to write the interesting... Like, like again, like, in the early Marvel phases, like, just write an interesting story about the character and any world building or yeah, other when, stuff when you think secondary. of, like, like, some of the movies we have up in our S tier, it's... Yeah, obviously, Avengers Infinity War is the big crossover, so everyone's involved, but... Captain America Civil War could have existed on its own, yep. entirely independent of, I'm sorry, uh, Winter Soldier, yeah, <laughs> not Civil War. I was going to say, Civil yeah, War is uh, not that one. Winter Soldier could have existed entirely on its own, in yep. its own universe, and not yep. referenced anything else. No, and it's, and it's yeah. totally fine. And same and with it's, Thor. It's a, and it's a solid character, right? Yeah. So it's one of those things where, at this point, I'm curious to see what James Gunn has in store for DC. I am cautiously optimistic. I think that he very clearly has his style of storytelling and the stories that he's comfortable telling. Like, yes. every creator has their pet projects that resonate with them and other things that they do less successfully or, like, are, are not as clear in their heads, but they do them because they can't tell the same story over yeah. and over again. And with James Gunn, it's, like, found family with just weird say, yeah. offbeat... <laughs> yeah, it's found family with weird offbeat characters that are, like, oh, man. lovable. His, uh, the fact that he was doing The Authority, mm-hmm. that... I'd... Little mini theory. I don't know if we have time for it. Little mini theory. Uh, it's GT Live. We can ramble as <laughs> so, much as um, we want. The, the wittiest, the wittiest long banter. The Authority was made by this artist named Jim Lee. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It was part of his comic company called Wildstorm. Uh-huh. Wildstorm was one of the sub imprints of Image Comics, which yeah. was a bunch of artists in the '90s being like, "Marvel isn't paying us enough. Let's make our own company." Great. Uh, Good job, Marvel. And w- rumor has it, mm-hmm. <laughs> Jim Lee wanted to be the editor-in-chief of Marvel. Yeah. Mm. So, from what I understand, he went and offered Marvel, hey, I'll sell you my company if yeah. you let me be editor-in-chief. Yeah. Huh. And they were like, no. So he was like, fine. Hey, DC, I'll sell you my company <laughs> if you let me be editor-in-chief. And yeah. they were like, one better, you can be publisher. Way! He's still yeah. the publisher of DC Comics. No Comment. way! That's so and cool. I have long believed that if they had bought Wildstorm and had gotten the authority, yeah. which was this really interesting uh, Justice League pastiche sure. with weird characters... That that would have been mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. instead of Guardians of the Galaxy back then. Oh, that's really interesting. So when James Gunn yeah. was like, "Oh, this is <laughs> I want the authority," I yeah. was like, "Yep, that's it. That makes yep. sense. That makes totally sense. a James Gunn project." That's so funny. It, well, and also like you look at like like what DC has coming down the pipeline, like Creature Commandos. Yep. It's like yeah, of course yeah. James Gunn <laughs> greenlit. And Creature that's Commandos. like the first thing. Yeah, it's the first thing, and it's yeah, it's because it's a weird group of characters with like odd little personality. Quir- it's basically Suicide Squad in animated form, yeah. like yeah. or his <laughs> The Suicide Squad. In animated form. With Bride of Frankenstein. With Bride of Frankenstein and, thrown and, in and, and horror The Shape monsters. of Water. And... Yeah. Like, it's like, I, huh, I wonder why you greenlit <laughs> that one, James. And it's like, okay, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, the, the Superman one? I'm real curious about that. Yeah. But also, I, you know, I could see a world where it's it's Superman about found family, you know. Superman hey, is an hey, outsider. Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane. Kind of, I mean, yeah. like, Superman as a character is an outsider alien who finds a, fa- you know, who finds a found family. <laughs> Literally in, finds a family in exact, Kansas. In Kansas and amongst, like, the Daily Planet crew. Yeah. And this and that. So, like, I see <clears throat> what kind of beats you could hit if you're James Gunn and you just have the thing that you're like, this is the thing that yeah. I write. Will it be that story? I don't know, but I can see a world where that one fits yeah. his model um but yeah i'm you know i i'd love to but for, again going back to the thing i'm excited about though like so i'm cur- i'm curious about that but i'm excited about like joker 2 i really liked joker yeah. 1 I, I don't know why you would give it a c i mean i know why you'd give him a ching yeah right let's let's put lady gaga okay sure <laughs> academy award winner lady she, gaga. she's actually great yeah. to be fair like uh, uh, the stuff that she's acted in, i'm like you're pretty solid um <laughs> I don't know how it's going to be in Joker, but I'm curious. You know, the Batman, really solid. Yeah, really, I was surprised with how much I liked the Batman. I, liked the Batman I, I, I was really skeptical expected. going in yep. and was blown away. Honestly, yeah, it's it it's great. really good. A bit too long. Uh, <laughs> you don't. You mean you don't like two hours and forty five minutes in a in a theater seat? So I mean, I don't mind. Here's the thing: I don't mind two hours and forty five minutes in the theater seat. But when it's just like Batman, something I am still yeah. justice. Uh, you know, it's like, well, it's, 
you know, an extended car sequence. Like, just ever, everything's just a little bit where, too extended. Where he murders a bunch of innocent people. <laughs> Whatever, man. Like... But I caught the penguin, so it's okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was justified. Oh, Battinson is so funny with his little, with his little eyeliner. <laughs> I'm angry and angsty and have feelings. Oh, man. Hey, so that's, that's us. Um, let us know your comments down below. Yep. What are you excited about for Marvel? So, so basically the answer was like, <laughs> not a whole lot. Um, I, I am excited. X-Men. I think, Are they coming? I don't know. Uh, well, I, I, I am happy they didn't rush into it because it would have been not great <laughs> at mean, the moment. You mean but, introducing yeah. Professor X into Multiverse of Madness only to snap his neck? It's not. Yeah. yeah. That's a quality representation of that franchise. Great. But like seriously, yeah. the, there's a bunch of... Really weird stuff happening in yep. in the X Men comics, and yep. I would love to see that adapted. They have like yep. their own like island continent nation, and they've terraformed Mars. That's awesome. why not? Yeah, let's sure. do it. Yeah, why not? The MCU is weird enough already. Just hanging out why out not? There. Why not? Mars just it's it's prime <laughs> real estate. It's there for yeah. the taking. Why not? <laughs> it's free real estate. Yeah, it is. It's free real estate. Okay, here let's hop back into the tier list. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Ant Man and the Wasp coming up next. Uh, this one actually has a very special place in my heart uh, because it is the movie that we watched the day that we were waiting for Ollie to be born. Steph and I had a uh, hospital appointment because Ollie was overdue uh, to be born. And so they're like, hey, come on in. We should start this process along. And, um, you know, they couldn't only... they. Get, they, having babies is weird. Uh, <laughs> the hospitals in general is weird, but having babies is weird, man. Cause, cause they're like, you know, we'll call you the day of when your slot kind of becomes open. So it's, so it's kind of this like moving but, but target. I hope, I hope you have the baby then. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, it's kind of this movable target, which is very strange. And so we were kind of left with this, hey, this is the day it's happening, but we don't know when. Things are going to get started or, like, when the hospital is going to call us. And so we were just kind of, like, coasting around, like, bouncing between things. And so we went to the mall and we went to Soup Plantation. Rest in peace. It's gone now. Um, COVID casualty? uh, Yeah, COVID casualty. That's that's unfortunate. unfortunate. Yeah, because this was all before COVID. uh, COVID casualty. But then um, we're like, well, there's a new Marvel movie. Let's check out Ant-Man and the Wasp. And so we watched Ant-Man and the Wasp. And it was mediocre. And then and then shortly thereafter, the hospital was like, hey, we're ready for it. And we're like, okay. But so to me, the most noteworthy thing about Ant-Man and the Wasp is that, you know, I was born shortly thereafter. All right. Post baby story. Timer starts now. <laughs> no, that was the two minutes. That was the no. two minute countdown, Ash. Bonus points for Ollie. No, bonus points for Ollie. Uh, I'd agree. It's Ant-Man, but worse. Yeah, I like, mean, honestly, it, it is. It, it has it is. a more visually interesting villain. Yes. Ghost is really cool. Mm-hmm. I like Lawrence Fishburne who, as an who, actor. Who also goes under underutilized. Yeah. Like, Ghost is visually it, it cool. It is going to be in the Thunderbolts, though. Which, maybe. Uh, sure. Like, right? When they talked about the Thunderbolts, and they're like, here's the people who are probably going to be in the Thunderbolts. I'm like, her? Ah. Like, her? What? Why? Uh, the Thunderbolts looks like... Black Widow too, which is weird. It, no, it's not yeah. right, it, and it shouldn't. Like, there's so many cool antiheroes and villains out there. Like Justin Hammer. That could be a part of it, yeah. and they're like, we're going to choose pretty much none of those and go with this other set. And you're like, why? What is the choices that are happening? Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah, like the reappearance of Ghost is like, <clears throat> yeah, were people really excited to bring back Ghost? Ghost yeah, was Maybe cool. not excited, but it's like... Okay, yeah. I like that character. Yeah, I did too. It's cool. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, it's like a... Okay. But yeah, I think you and I are on the same page. This is Ant-Man uh, with same cool ideas. They did it again, but worse. Yeah. I would put this in D. I agree. Yeah, it's it was low. Um, yeah, it was low for me. I It was fine. It was, it was fine. Um, it's also one of those things, too, where I... <clears throat> no, I have nothing. I lit, I'm trying to think if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Oh, I that don't. that's another yeah, that, that's right, a problem. There. Right, it is. It's it, a problem. It was fine. It was less funny, less exciting, less creative. Yep. Not the movie to follow Infinity War with. No, no, definitely not. Speaking of, Captain Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, and that is indeed next. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Uh, the, uh-huh. So I think, I think these two were very... Like, when we program YouTube channels... 
Sometimes there are episodes that are going to do less well, and you know that because Mm -hmm. it's a more limited popular, you know, it's not as popular of an IP, it's underappreciated, it's more of a risk, you know, maybe the theory is weaker, whatever, and so you program them in between really good episodes, so that way, you know, yeah, you had two kind of like middling ones or whatever, but you bounce back. You have your like bounce back episodes on either side. Infinity War and Endgame are your bounce back episodes. And Ant Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel. Ed, that's funny. I disagree with you. Whoa! Oh, spicy! Yeah. Finally! Finally. <laughs> I, I think the online discourse around Captain Marvel yep. has poisoned that movie. Mm. It was way more successful than I think anyone gave it credit for. I mean, it was successful. It made over a billion dollars. It did, because I think you had a lot of carryover viewership from Avengers 1. Like, I went to see it, not out of, like, woo, I want to see this character. And, I mean, partly because mm-hmm. I'm like, I need to see what's going to happen in Endgame. Like, I need this to understand what's going to happen in Endgame. And so I met mm-hmm. Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, like, I think a lot of people fell it like, Captain Marvel's in the billion dollar club because I think a lot of people yeah. felt that way. Whereas Ant-Man was like, oh, it's just Ant-Man 2. Like, it was just kind of, like, in there, and I don't think people felt, like, the urgency to see it as much. Yeah. Captain Marvel's like, oh, this is a new character, and it felt like... This one's important. Yeah, and it was the one that was in the tease. It was in the tease, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it, uh... Yeah, but you like you like this one? I don't dislike it, okay. is the thing. Like, I, I have no strong positive feelings towards Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just also think, as I mentioned, the discourse. Sure. Capital D discourse. The capital D discourse, <clears throat> as opposed um, to the capital O opinions and the yeah. capital F facts. Yeah. You have to know the difference. You do. Know yeah. the difference. Uh, I, I, I think graphic. that it has really colored people's opinion about this I, I, and turned what was like it was pretty pretty fine pretty good <laughs> pretty fine into yeah. like the vitriolic sure. hatred I, I i mean here's the thing i don't think it's like the worst mm. uh, you know i but i also i don't so looking at it right the whole i have amnesia and so the whole story is kind of being told in this fragmented way until, like, the midpoint where all of a sudden I get all my memories back. It's like, I I didn't love that structure. Mm-hmm. Or I wouldn't have minded that structure had it been executed better. Mm-hmm. Is is one of my problems with it. Uh, my other problem with it is just the way that they characterize Captain Marvel herself. Where she is too powerful. And and maybe, that, maybe that's not a fault of this particular movie. <clears throat> but... As the movie that introduced her and her power set and all that, yeah. she she, thro- uh, she skews everything. We needed and someone to blow up the Thanos ship. No, right. Yeah. And th- and that's the thing is like all of a sudden, boop, all the problems are solved. Mm-hmm. Right. It's and and the the character arc of oh you have to embrace your emotions. Right. Like that's that's the whole thing. Right. Like oh you can't yeah. have emotions and then by the end embrace your emotions. I didn't feel like it was executed. In a way that Warren, like, I didn't see that journey in Carol Danvers. Let's meet halfway and okay. put it in D above Ant Man. Okay, D above Ant Man. We'll meet in the middle. Uh, right there toward you. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that as a victory. I'll take that as a win. <laughs> I don't, and, and the thing is, I feel like I haven't been poisoned by the discourse. I just, like. Yeah, I mean, everything you raise is a valid point. Like, I just don't enjoy, I, I don't enjoy, I didn't enjoy it. What I think shifted my opinion about this movie, yeah. especially in the theater. Yeah. I saw it in a theater where the entire row in front of me was obviously girls from a high school. Uh-huh. A group of friends from a high school. And they were so into this movie. Hmm. And, like... Yeah. Okay. And it was also funny beforehand that this is where I started to realize, oh, what I consume in media <laughs> isn't everything. It's not, because yeah. the Frozen 2 trailer played before this. And uh-huh. they were all like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't even get yeah, me started yeah, on Frozen. It, it, anyway. Um, don't even get me started on Frozen 2. And I Frozen think the two. fact that... What were you doing? Way to, way to fumble the ball on that one. <laughs> Sorry. The, the fact that this opened up this sort of genre storytelling mm-hmm. of like, here's a weird sci-fi thing about aliens that shapeshift. Yeah. And it got a bunch of people who would not traditionally be into that sort of yeah. story yeah. into this sort of story. Okay. I think that that... Is a good thing, actually. All right, fine. Low <laughs> okay. <seat> there. <laughs> Bam. Oh, Opinions just, change. Just, just Context later. matters. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Facts are real ch- changeable things. Okay. End game. End game. Ooh. But... The way to rank this one mm. is 
is it better or worse than Infinity War? Oh, and I and that determines what letter place it, place it is in. And really? I think it is worse than Infinity War. Oh, because Infinity War is basically a perfect movie. Yeah, Infinity War is perfect. <laughs> I would say yes. Um, okay. I think Endgame had the impossible task mm-hmm. of let's finish off this huge story. Yep. In a satisfying way. Sure. And they did it in, in a story format that traditionally is a cop-out. Uh-huh. <laughs> with time, time travel. Time heist, yeah. And they managed to make people care about Thor the Dark World. <laughs> I mean, people... It made people acknowledge it that made Thor the Dark World it, existed. No, go back and watch some of these audience reactions where they, like... Audience compilation of reactions in theaters. Yeah. Super fascinating they're, to watch. Yeah, they're fun. And Asgard, 2013. Woo! Like, were they reacting to Asgard or Asgard 2013? Because I guarantee people weren't acting that way to Dark World. <laughs> yeah, this is Dark World. No, they were like, oh, it's. I yeah. feel like that's more of a, woo, it's Asgard. Not fair. Woo, let's fair. see some Dark Elves. But, like, okay. I, I think that that was an intelligent way to do that. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. sure. I, I think I when I was in the theater, I'm like, are you kidding me? They're bringing back Dark. <laughs> of all the movies that they're calling back to, Dark, they're like, oh, we need to retcon this to be good. <laughs> Remember this one? Yeah, this was good too, guys. It actually, yeah, Depressed Thor was in, <laughs> yeah, right. in this movie in the yeah. background. Okay, <clears throat> so where then do you rank it? Because our time, I know our time is tight. I'd rank it an A. Wow. I was going to put it in C. Whoa! Yeah, I think I think as a cultural touchstone, you already kind of b- burned it once with Inv- Avengers. Inf- like Avengers: Infinity War, War was the first part of the cultural touchstone, so like you've lost a little bit of the like. Well, here's everyone together, mm-hmm. so you've done that right. And as a story, this one felt less cohesive, more fragmented, and it didn't come to a satisfying conclusion. But like, it came to a satisfying of a conclusion. To- it came to as satisfying of a conclusion as you could. With yeah, get rid of that alarm. We're talking yeah, about this. Yeah, we're talking about this. <laughs> oh my god, I can't win. Yeah. <laughs> there is here. no correct thing here. for me to do. No, no I know. I, you're, I'm sorry. You're, you're in a lose lose. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just, this one though. Don't worry. Ne- on the next one, you can jump down our throats again. It'll yeah, be fine. sure. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> this one's a big deal. This yeah, is, yeah this is. is an important one to get right. Cause okay, so this is my unpopular opinion. I didn't. I did, <clears throat> I really like. I walked out of it, and everyone was like, oh, "I'm so hype about Endgame." I'm like, "Yeah, it's, it's okay." Like like looking at this list, did I like Endgame more than anything? Like more than Avengers? <sighs> wow. Yeah. Did I like wow. it more now? Because, uh, sure, there are a couple of great moments. Captain America getting the hammer. Great moment. Uh, on your left, portals opening. Great. They, but, but then it becomes CGI Fest 20... What, what was it? 20, 2019? CGI Fest <laughs> yeah, 2020? 2019. 2019. Um, the, time, <laughs> I'm try- the time heist stuff... It's, it's funny. Hmm, did I like it more than Avengers... Well, you basically got to see Avengers again in this movie. I mean, you do. Yeah, right. You do. You do. You s- <laughs> and, and maybe that's the problem I had with it is this was the one that felt so insidery that it lost the strength of the narrative for me. Where I watch this and I'm like, I understand what's going on here because I've watched all of these. But... To a lay viewer, they would have no clue what's going on. And and even within me, it feels so self-referential, callbacky, and like nostalgia baity that I'm like, I I don't like I don't want to revisit old movies. I want to see these characters dealing with a new movie. Like I like I want to see a new story being told here rather than let's go back. And I think a lot of the solutions that get that come up in this one, right? Around like, hey, let's let's uh, have Captain Marvel fly in and, and save the day by destroying the Thanos ship, right? Or let's have a new Thanos, like like let's let's yes, Thanos kill, again. Let's kill <laughs> Thanos in the first couple minutes, which again is weird. <clears throat> like that was such a strange moment to me because it's like you just killed Thanos. Like that sucks. That's the, the new Thanos that they're fighting here is not the Thanos that I wanted yeah. to see beaten. I wanted to see farmer Thanos get beaten, not old Thanos from the past. And so you have a lot of weird 
moment. And yeah, it's at the time heist and this and that, and it's like cute or whatever. I, I just, I, I, I walked won't. away from this one and it felt so plot mecha- Sorry, this is the last thing I'll say. <clears throat> you're good. Is this is one where you, you say you're watching Avengers again, and, and you do because they're recycling a lot of it. One, a lot of it felt recycled, but two, it felt so heavy in the plot mechanics of like, this has to happen, then this has to happen, then this. And like, I saw the wheels and the cogs turning because they had to turn to make a conclusion happen, as opposed to, hey, I'm seeing characters do things that make sense so that way a story happens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm Tony Stark and I just invented time travel. You know, like, and there's a lot of convenient plot devices that happen in order for things to work out as opposed to things organically happening and a story organically being told, which is why I think I ultimately walked out of that one being like, ah, that was fine. You know, haha, America's ass. Ha ha You said, that's funny. <laughs> you know, look at the meme. So th- that's, that's my unpopular opinion that'll get me canceled off the internet. I will concede. I do think that Thanos, it was an interesting choice killing Thanos in the first five minutes. And I wonder what the different movie would be had that been the villain of the yeah. whole thing. Because that was also a Thanos that had completed his character arc. Right, yeah, sure. <clears throat> and, like, where did he grow from there? Yeah. Um, so that would have been interesting. Uh, I think this movie deciding to, like, say, no, mm-hmm. we're going to continue this time. We're not going to immediately fix it. Yeah. This is now a world where we've had all these problems and... <laughs> They, they ended up dropping the ball yep. on that with Phase 4. Oh, 100%. But that was an interesting oh, 100%. idea yes. that yes. they presented, and I am very happy that they did not go back on that. No, to me, the, the blip world, or not the blip world, like the world post-blip <clears throat> is like so interesting. Also, why, why you got called blip? Everyone called it a snap. Oh, I know, right? I, right? I mean, right that, that, that is stupid. a pet peeve of mine. That was so, <laughs> I think it's probably because no one knew that it was a snap that caused it. And so, well, dumb. <laughs> it, it, right, I mean, it is, you're right. Like Tony Stark should have come up and been like, hey guys, this guy snapped, yeah. you know, whatever. But to me, that's the best part. The, the first act of the movie. Yeah, where they're like is, depressed Avengers. <laughs> yeah, my, the first I act agree. of the movie minus, minus the like killing thing. I hated the, 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 the fact that they killed Thanos. I'm like, that was just weird. And it's, Captain Marvel, let me hold him down and slice <laughs> off his head. And I'm like, oh, that sucks, dude. Um, but to me, the first act of the movie, far and away my favorite part. And then bit by bit, I became like, uh, the time heist was like, oh, this is fun and nostalgic. And then the final act, eh, cool, it's exciting. And mm-hmm. like, there are those big like cheer moments. <laughs> but as a narrative story about overcoming, you know, hey, we lost yeah. and now we have to win. <clears throat> I, did, I didn't see that and it didn't adhere as well to me, which is why, yeah. But when the first act of your movie, like you said, you just said, like the first act of the movie, like, yeah. You know, and you have all this cool <laughs> stuff that follows. Also, uh, and, and well, I would also say like I think the final act really, I think the final act and the first act and the final act are very strong. Yeah. I like the time heist more than you clearly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Like, it's just... So I, I would say all three of these acts are strong. Yep. Uh, middle act is weaker. Yep. That is true. I it, when you talk about like oh all of the you have to know all of the stuff. Yep. I don't agree with that. Hmm. I think that these characters have worked wormed their way into the public consciousness enough mm. that you could look at these and be like oh this is clearly a past avengers mm. adventure sure and you don't necessarily mm. need that context of i need to know the exact events that happened in the battle of new york but then the but then the references <clears throat> go like poo you know like oh, well, why well, are they don't, don't we pra- don't we praise other films for having like oh this is something that if you are a fan it is for you but you don't have to watch the thing well right but i'm saying in this movie this is one of the times where if you have not watched the thing not only are the it, references it is an going objectively up, worse ex- like, yeah it, right like okay. I, like i think about my dad who is a casual like he watches the movies yeah. on sundays or you know if they're on <clears throat> tbs or whatever right like they're just there and he's casually aware of some of these things but if you were to drop him into endgame and all of a sudden he sees you know to you know thor depressed who's the rock but, guy yeah like yeah what's, what's, no what's Korg, right? yeah right exactly it's yeah. like what you know or especially the time heist bits where it's like so dependent on you knew that movie or you knew like what was mm-hmm. going on in the events around there i don't know that's that's my it, it got to the point where it was detracting from the the narrative or the movie that was being yeah. told so well what did you say you were going to give it i was going to say like a c-ish 
Okay, well, I would give this an A. I so, think we meet in the middle with, B. with the lowest B possible. Oh, lowest B possible. But Well, I mean, you feel so strongly yeah, here, about I'll, this, I'll, and I'll, I am... I'll put it in, like, mid-B. Sure, okay. You. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> you feel so strongly about this, and I really like this movie, but yeah. it is not one that I, like... I, I am willing to, like, go to fisticuffs sure. over, you know? <laughs> We're so agreeable. Sure. Also, and, and also, and the last thing I'll say, like... Moments like Professor, Hulk, and and then the stuff that they jump into is just weird, right? Like Professor yeah, Hulk, that, like why is all of his, why did we skip? There was any a, of that. There was a scene cut from Infinity War, which is, might actually be the biggest blemish on Infinity War, in my opinion. Yeah, where they have them come to the agreement while he's in the Hulkbuster suit, yeah. and he like breaks out of it. Oh, really? As Professor Hulk, they cut that scene. Huh. I don't know why. That's interesting. Because I think that that was the, the moment to do it. Yeah, no, I, that makes total sense. Because I think everyone coming back and it's like, I'm permanently in Hulk mode now. Yeah. And I'm Professor Hulk and I'm smart. It's like, what? <laughs> I wear shirts now. Yeah, it, it, right. <laughs> I wear shirts now. It's just weird. Like, m- creative decisions like that were weird, mm-hmm. right? And, and you know, just that that was that was ultimately what, what it boiled down to me in a lot of ways. There were a lot mm-hmm. of creative decisions that I'm like, ah, this is... Not this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me as a person. Uh, I also wish that uh, Nando V Movies. If you've never watched Nando V Movies, totally great YouTuber, fantastic yeah. channel. Um, he's wonderful. I love a lot of his stuff, especially his uh, One Small Change series. Uh, I find myself agreeing with him. He's also a Hammer fan, um, but not MC. Um, <laughs> but he uh, he did this one that I think rubbed me the wrong way. With, not not his video when I was watching Endgame in the final battle and he perfectly articulated what my problem was with it which is the nebula the ne- that yeah. nebula should be the one 100% agree on to that to carry the infinity gauntlet at a certain point like the final run to like finish off Thanos and have the infinity gauntlet and all of this stuff like it should be nebula instead of Captain Marvel because they give it to Captain Marvel a character who has never met Thanos has no connection with him whatsoever. Yeah. And who just had a billion dollar movie, which and, was and, why. And who just had a billion dollar movie, yeah. go girl power. Uh, as opposed <laughs> to Nebula, who has been abused by Thanos her entire life and has, you know, this jaded history yeah. and has aligned herself with these people who used to be her enemies, but now they're collected together in this united front against this massive evil. Yeah. From a character motivation standpoint, yes. Like, s- small things like that in Endgame added up to me being like, ah, oh, like... That's fair. That's what I... So it's, it was death by a thousand paper cuts, I think, with this one for me, which is one of the reasons why I wasn't like more like, woo! Hey, paper, it, cu- paper cuts are painful, so a thousand right, of them. Right, that, right. That adds up to a C. Yeah, right. So I, I, I totally C. get okay. C for paper cut. Cool, C for paper cut. Okay, No Way Home, or yeah. No, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Far no From home. home. Yeah. Yes, Far, far From Home. Far yeah. From Home. It's the one all the it's... way to the left. Uh, the main appeal of this is seeing Spider-Man traditionally a New York-based character in other cities. Yes. And for that, I think they succeeded. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did think it was weird that they went and put Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> in <laughs> older movies. Interesting choice. Yeah. Uh, I do like that he's like an unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm. Like, did he actually make the barf tech? Mm-hmm. Or did he? does he think he, makes, he made the barf tech? <laughs> yeah. Um... I did not like this one as much as Homecoming. Yep. I think Mysterio is a great villain, mm-hmm. but it. I think this movie's obsession with Iron Man hurt mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And. It, I understand that that was a big deal to Peter and to the audience, mm-hmm. but I think that that made this less of a Spider-Man movie yeah. and more of a R.I.P. Iron Man yeah. movie featuring Spider-Man. Fe- featuring Spider. <laughs> yeah. If that, does that make sense? No, 100%. Yeah. Um, I, I, I actually agree. I think Mysterio as a villain was actually su- surprisingly well realized. Yes. Um, I think the idea of using, you know, this g- guy who historically in the comics is like, I've got magic powers and I'm a stage performer and I'm using illusion cubes to translate that into here's a bunch of drones and, and a mocap suit. And mocap <laughs> suit, which, I, you know, is, is a little bit like, this is weird and cringy, but also like, it makes sense. Like, it, it is realistic. Yeah. And- which. And that costume, by the way, mm-hmm. like, I, so people like my mom, yeah. who are vaguely aware of movies, but don't, yeah. she saw that costume and was like, that's a cool costume. Yeah. But for a, that, that is a case where Insider Baseball with mm-hmm. us, where we're like, that's very clever yeah. using a mocap suit, mm-hmm. but that can also be yeah, it's his like a, superhero his, suit. His outfit, yeah. yeah. No, so I, so I think Mysterio is always a tricky character to pull off. 
but also a cool character when you do it right, and I think they did it right. I think he's mm-hmm. super cool. The, the dream nightmare sequences with Spider-Man are awesome, where he can't trust his own senses. Yeah. And, you know, Mysterio's tricking him to get smashed by a train. I think they're visually gorgeous. Like, in a, in a lot of the same way that I like Doctor Strange for all the, like, trippy yeah. visual sequences, I think those sequences are awesome. But, to your point, the the dependence on the, the MacGuffin of the glasses... Oh yeah, Tony yeah. Stark's glasses take up so much focus and runtime and hijinks around them. It's like, oh, and the glasses. And also, I don't buy that Tony Stark would give the glasses to Spider Man, and I don't buy that Peter Parker would just give him. Like the thing, I didn't buy. This is where I start not buying the characters as written to perform the mm. beats that they're expected to to perform. Like I don't think. All of those things would have happened in the sequence that you see them happening. It doesn't feel natural to the characters. And even if it did, like you said, it takes up so much so much runtime. That all this focus on Iron Man, Iron Man, I'm going to be the next Iron Man. Am I yeah. going to be the next Iron Man? I, I don't care. I want to see him dealing with a lot of this stuff. And he can grieve. That's great. But, yeah, grieve. Deal with it. <laughs> I'm um, <awesome. laughs> Woo! Got him. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it just felt distracting and, and a little bit too... Again, like, layering on too many things and it couldn't find the right balance in them. I did not like it as much as, as Homecoming. I agree. I would say this is not as good as Endgame. Yeah. Um, y- y- sure, so, yes. Okay. So yeah. would that, that would either put it at the bottom of B or at the top of C. I, you like it better than Avengers? Oh, man, now we're getting, like, nitpicking. Yeah, nit- <laughs> oh, man, are we getting this nitpicking? No, I didn't like it as much as Avengers. Okay. No, I didn't. Okay. So I'd put it, yeah. I think that's fair. I would agree with that. Okay. Cool. Great. Look at us. We're, getting, look at, we're achieving your bell curve, actually, <laughs> naturally yeah, like, very nicely. Look at how beautiful this it's, is. It's, <laughs> this is the look at the guy. data. <laughs> uh, look at this. And look at the nice bell curve. We have a, prefer, a perfect statistical representation here. <laughs> well, naturally. Uh, well, we're going well, to gonna, have to start moving some stuff well, around we're soon. Gonna have to ship. So. Uh, next up is what? Black Widow? Uh, yep. Cool. Uh, Black Widow was a movie that should have come out in 2015, and if it did, it would have been... A solid B. <laughs> uh, uh, the fact that it came out in 2020, five years too late. This is a movie that should have come out immediately after Civil War. Uh, like, yeah. where it's set. Yeah. And I understand there was internal studio politics, but that is an, an excuse for a movie that yeah came out too late. Right, I mean, like, sure, you might have to contractually release a movie... But that doesn't mean that, like, yeah. shit, you know, when you release it, doesn't aff- it affects our yeah, perception this was, of it. This was another one where the same guy who did, was not confident yeah. in Black Panther... Wasn't confident in... In, in Black Widow for yeah. similar but different reasons. Yeah, right. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah right? right? The, sto- the stories are kind of... I, I, I had read about that one. I, I didn't know that he did it with Black Panther, but I didn't know he... Because yeah. I was really curious about, like, A Captain why Marvel this, as well, all, th- all three Why of those. this movie? Yeah. Um, okay. So... So, I, in my opinion, that makes it like a D. Yep, I agree. It's a D tier. I 100% agree. Here, this is... I, sure. I don't know. I, would probably <laughs> I don't have any strong opinions right, about Black I, Widow, I which it. is, again, the problem. Yeah. It's, I, I, and again, just to really quickly piggyback off of it, like, I think Red Guardian is funny as a character. Yes. I think Let's Sit Here for a prolonged period of time and watch <laughs> a pig die was incredibly uncomfortable in a theater. Uh, or or at home, I guess, because this was at home. This was at yeah, home. it was a Disney uh, the Plus. The Disney streaming, yeah. now that I think about it. Um, but, like, yeah, let's sit and watch this pig suffocate. Ah, isn't that funny? I'm like, what is this sequence for? The opening had what I liked about some of the early Marvel stuff, where it's mm-hmm. like, the opening is incredibly disturbing, mm-hmm. about, like, here, we'll, here's, watch yeah. the bunch of girls being led to their, like, brainwashing seat. Like, that was incredibly disturbing. Like, I felt uncomfortable watching that. I'm like, oh. this is weird. But then... Then it becomes Marvel. Also, super similar vibes to like Stranger Things. Yes, in a positive yeah, way. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, I. If it had been able to carry through like the opening of the movie, where I'm like, oh, this is like getting into what is actually a really disturbing yeah. plot uh, and and a dis- disturbing world of like we're taking little kids and training them up to become <clears throat> assassins and reject their femininity and all this stuff. like. That's a no, compelling reject story. and weaponize yes. their feminine. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like that's a really compelling narrative there <clears throat> that this movie can and probably should deal with mm-hmm. and wanted to dip its toes into. But I was like, yeah, no, let's talk about the funny Russian guy. And and then and also, you know, for all the vilifying that's getting done over, you know, the head of the project and all this stuff. At the end of the day, 
the parents let it happen. You know, Red yeah. Guardian and, and what's her face, yeah. her like mother. And the other one. Yeah, the other one. <laughs> let it happen. But it's like, oh, hey, I'm so glad we're a family again. Whoa. And it's like, no, they sold you into the yeah. system. That, that doesn't get you a pass. That, just because they're it, it was real to me. Yeah. The, it's like, come on. So this was, again, this was one of those moments where I, I, I don't want to nitpick. It doesn't feel like nitpicking. It feels like there were large con, uh, consolate, not consolate, like large kind of gaps in logic that existed were just because for the convenience of the movie. Like, yeah. oh, we need Black Widow to have a family to connect with. So let's just ignore the fact that and, she And we don't have James be... Gunn writing this one. So. Right. And so, <laughs> you know, we're not going to address the clear family trauma yeah. that they put you through and this and that. So anyway, yeah, that one, too, too many years too late, too many missed opportunities. Didn't love it. Great. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, they, these are now in chronological order. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. so Shang-Chi. <clears throat> Shang-Chi. Uh... This was one of the better Phase 4 movies, in my opinion, because yes. it went back to basics. Yep. It introduced new, really cool ideas, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I This is a corner of the MCU that I'm super fascinated to see the future of. Yep. This, this sort of uh, a, a East Asian, mm -hmm. like that whole part of the universe. Super awesome. I'm super excited to see it. Uh, this is a movie that Kid Lee would have just... Adored. Oh, kid Lee. Yeah, I know. Like, oh, kid Lee. I was a big fan of Jackie Chan sure. Adventures. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is the One same sort of uh, thing. Oh, great. Mo Gui Gui fight eats out. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Um, oh, Jack Chan. I, I think super solid. I'm not sure. I put it in A. Yeah. But I would put it around B. Yeah. Somewhere in B. I would put it in a high B. Um, and, and if we do that, I am comfortable knocking Endgame down to C. Okay. Whoa! Keep our, we gotta keep the bell curve. Okay, keep the bell curve. There you go. Um, yes, hundred <laughs> percent. I I thought this was great. I think the only my only complaint with this one is that it's let down by its last act. I think. Which yeah, common Marvel problem. Right. Which right. Common which, Marvel L. Which all of a sudden, well, it, it, but it wasn't right. Like that's the thing. Like if you look at Ragnarok, had a really solid last sure. act. You look at uh, common phase four L. Yeah, no, common phase four. <laughs> right. This this is when you start to see them not being able to end their movies outside of mm -hmm. giant CGI battle in some way, right? And so you have, to me, the Shang Chi versus Wen Wu father son yeah. dynamic so compelling, very and, powerful, and the martial arts battling that the, you know with with their ring, magic, shooting magic rings that, at each other. Th this was. A great way to also power up a character yes. to play in the big leagues yep. in a way that, like, Shang-Chi in the comics, yep. super fascinating, awesome character, cannot be in the same league yep. as, like, a Thor. But the Ten Rings... The Ten Rings. Also, the, the Ten Rings being yep. fighting rings, yep. super inspired. Yeah, it's great. I love a lot of the creative decisions. I liked a lot of the hand-to-hand martial combat. Uh, martial... Martial com... Yeah. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> I think That's it's correct. Good. I'm like, did I meant to say Mortal Kombat? No, no. Did I say Mortal Kombat? No. Yo, Great. yo, Shang Chi in a Mortal Kombat game though. <laughs> Guest character. Yes, that'd be amazing. Yes, please. Uh, no, I think a lot of the hand-to-hand stuff was great. I thought it was super well shot. Like the bus sequence is fantastic. Yeah. I thought more of the jokes landed than didn't land. I did think like his his uh, best friend, uh, the Aquafina, Aquafina, yeah, yeah, was mildly obnoxious, but not so, <laughs> like so off putting that but I'm like became a master archer in a day. Yeah, yeah, and and it gets to your last act where it's like, oh, so if it had just been, hey, Wenwu versus Song Chi, okay, cool, yeah. but then it's like, and now here's the real and, and the, the, the door. Also, the sister. Uh, great character. Yes, great uh, character. Jialing, I think. Yes, I, th I believe you're right. But the, yeah, great character. But then it's like, and now here's the giant d dragon demon thing, and you're like, oh, and and <laughs> do, do we have to? <laughs> yeah, like, and, and it's the one that eats the dad, and it's like, oh, well, I, that, I, oh, well, that was because this is a world class actor that we probably can't lock sure. down for more than right, one. But movie. it's like there are other ways to say, you know, yeah, I don't know. Like I would have liked to have seen. He he goes into a portal and disappears and maybe can come back if right what if, the if, contract if Tony Wang yeah no, wants but, to so, I, so I'm so sorry if I got that name wrong but yeah this is one where I liked a lot of it last act was kind of a bummer but overall I thought it was pretty solid and I liked it a lot more than I thought I would um yeah, yeah somewhere around there somewhere around yeah. here somewhere around here um okay cool next Eternals the Eternals <laughs> this is where I realized that. Man, they don't know what should be a movie and what should be a TV show anymore. Ooh, okay, yeah. Uh, this movie would have benefited way better, in my opinion, if it had been a four to six episode Disney Plus miniseries. Yeah! Where they had way more time to explore. E they introduced nine new characters in 
an hour and 45 minutes and like explored two of them well. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you remember Kit Harrington's yeah. in this movie? <laughs> yeah, right. He's, he's there. He gets a sword. I know he gets a sword. He gets a sword at yeah, the end. Yeah, he, he took the black again. Right. And... Yeah, right. I know. It's like how sometimes you look at like Hollywood casting. Like we were talking about it with uh, Michael Keaton and like he yeah, plays yeah, yeah, the yeah. bat and, and like Batman basically all the time or like a winged superhero all the time. Kit Harrington's like, Hey, can you be a knight again? And also a knight with a big sword and also wear black all the time. Like, you're that guy. <laughs> like, he's the Hollywood go-to guy for that at this point. And he was like, hey, I like money. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> Do I want to join the biggest franchise in movie history? Why yeah, not? might as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's my biggest problem is yep. that it did not have enough room to breathe. This could have been so interesting. I also understand that I, as you can tell throughout the series, really like the big idea sci-fi yep. stuff. So that hit well for me. Yep. But I can also see there's that point in the middle of the movie where they start going into this extended dialogue sequence of, yep. here's how this world sci- weird sci-fi concept yep. works. I can see that losing a lot of people, mm-hmm. and it, this shouldn't have been a movie. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I mean, that by your yeah. standard, that's an F. <laughs> that's failed as a movie. You say, this shouldn't be a movie. You know what? I hadn't. I would. I was gonna put it in E. You yeah. have convinced me that that is correct. I would put this in an F. It has failed as a movie. You know what? And if by my barometer of what falls into F, which is, <laughs> did I fall asleep during it? Oh, ooh, ouch! I, I definitely fell asleep ouch. in the middle of this one. Uh, right after the sexy time <clears throat> scene, I'm like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, then I, then, no, and then and then I went. And to be fair, I I, I woke back up. Finished it, obviously. But then I I rewatched it later, and I'm like, oh, no, I didn't miss anything. <laughs> like, I went back, and I'm like, no, nope, I didn't miss a thing. Um, even though I, like, there are interest again, it's one of those where there are interesting nuggets in there, but none of, like you said, none yeah. of them get explored because there's so <laughs> darn much that has to happen. And, you know, I wasn't off-put by a lot of the weird, I wasn't off-put by a lot of the weird sci-fi stuff, but it was just one of those things where none of it got any time to breathe, breathe. Yeah. exactly. Because you were on, now we're flashing back to ancient Babylon. Now we're flashing forward to modern times outside of flower shop. Now we're flashing back yeah. to like the pyramid. It's like, oh my gosh, geez. Um, I didn't love how it fit in with like the Thanos Infinity War setups too. Like they're like, <laughs> uh, they were here the whole time. Uh, another uh, Nando yeah. uh, shout out here. He pointed out a problem here that's like, how do these people work? Because Athena exists in this universe, right. and Athena is in this movie, and they are apparently different characters. Right, and they're different characters. Which, yeah, it, yeah. It, it reveals yep. that there are issues. Yeah. In... No, you can, you again, and you start to see them trying to, like, soft retcon things, or kind of, yeah. like, squeeze things in. It's like, oh, well, these got to fit into a connected universe, so let's just... Yeah, ah. and Thanos is an Eternal now, apparently. Right. Like, which, I guess. I... I like our theory about that one, actually, where mm-hmm. where we did uh, Thanos is uh, an Eternal who is what do they call it in the movie? He's oh my god, uh, he has, it, he has like whatever a, it's the weird has. it's the weird disease. Yeah, that, like, where he's like the brain. his programming is, is mad weary. Mad weary, yeah, that's right, mad weary. Where his programming is going a little bit haywire. I like that theory a lot because if he's I mean, an Eternal, it's basically the, canon, right? I yeah, I mean it's fact. We're saying it. On, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, I mean we do film theory, but honestly, it's more are like they film theories? Fact. Yeah, like let's be honest. Are they? We're, we're writing this for everyone. Um... Bad CGI during the post credit scenes, like, man. <laughs> Pip the troll. Pip the troll. <laughs> that was one of those times where I'm like, ooh, that is crazy. Like, that was, that was, up to that point, I'm like, oh, this is the worst that the CGI has been in this series. Because Pip the troll was rough. Um, well, there was one other thing I wanted to say about this one. Oh, and then last thing I'll say about this, and I I felt this way, and then Nando, haha, <laughs> Nando, this getting a lot of promo today. Um, <laughs> Nando actually explicitly called this out, which I was glad that someone did, because it's not our place to really yeah. make a video about it, but I felt the same way, where the uh, alternates, or... What Deviants. It? Deviants, thank the you. The alternates? I, 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 <laughs> there's a lot of lore <laughs> canon that is up here. Yeah, uh, those guys. Um, at some point, it felt like there should like they ultimately amount to nothing. Yeah, even there, there should have the moment where they were like, "We're not so different, you and I." No, like honestly, yeah. this was one of the times where it was warranted, and from a narrative standpoint, it would have made sense. Yeah. For hey, you're the big bad deviant, and we're the Eternals. We're all being screwed over by the Celestials. Let's do something yeah. about this, as opposed to like, "Oh, you're still the bad guy. Let's kill you." Yeah, and I, and 
that is my problem with a lot of late Marvel, is in order to keep the status quo, I guess it would be the answer, or just out of fear of, I don't know, making a bad guy not villainous anymore? <laughs> like, you have a lot of people with good points getting steamrolled in the end because the plot demands it. Yeah, long, are, long gone are the days where T'Challa changes his world outlook because he was like, Killmonger was right. Right! No. We need to be better. Be yeah. better, Senator. Right, no. Yeah, be better. <laughs> See, they put it in Falcon and the Winter Soldier <laughs> and not anywhere else. But no, like, this is the f- phase where all of a sudden you have a lot of villains with some really solid, interesting points. Yeah. And it's like, nope, you're still the bad guy. It's like, no, the, 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 this guy isn't necessarily the bad guy. It's the Celestial who's, like, puppeteering everything. Yeah. Same thing down the line with Thor Love and Thunder, which we'll get to in yeah. a minute, where it's like, this guy is basically getting steamrolled by the gods, and he's like, this is an unfair system. I need to take things into my own hands. It's like, nope, you're still the villain. There's no there's no nuance here. There's no room <laughs> for a discussion. Let's, let's just kill you off and move on to the next movie. We can't afford Christian Bale for two movies. <laughs> right? It's yeah. like... Yeah, well, we'll get to that one. Yeah, <laughs> but, and it's not even just like, we can't afford you for another movie. It's like, <clears throat> we can't be bothered to come up with a narrative that allows you to exist in this world anymore, yeah. so we're just going to write you off. And that was frustrating to me. So that was, from a narrative standpoint, again, as the narrative lore guy, yeah. I'm like, that bothered me because I liked that <laughs> variant. All right, Spider-Man! Spider, okay. Sp- Spider-Man <laughs> the Cameo Fest. <laughs> True. Uh, I walked out of the theater of this movie upset because it was so good. And I was like, I was like, I will never make something this good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And it's not even because I think that it's like a perfect movie or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just. Kevin Feige and all of the creatives, and I'm not, I'm not trying to just boil it down to Kevin Feige, yeah. but all of the creatives behind this movie clearly had so much respect for these movies that they may not have had any involvement with. Mm-hmm. Even the amazing Spider-Man movies where yeah. they were like, we need to respect these. Yeah. They respected the characters, yeah. the stories, and they made an amazing movie yep. that, uh, is it the perfect movie? Mm-hmm. No. Is it a great Spider-Man story paying respect to all of these mm-hmm. past characters? Yes. Mm-hmm. I would say it's a high A. Ooh, I was gonna say. Okay, low yeah, S. yeah, I was yeah say sure. Low S. Yeah, the yeah. only reason I would say not is because look at the bell curve; it's ruined. I know the bell curve is a little bit yeah. ruined, but I will. Here's what. Here's my take: any movie that can retroactively make other yes, movies 100%. look better, hundred percent, and be like, "Wow, that was awesome," yeah. you know, and like you said, pay respect to a lot of characters that. Like almost Who cared fi- about Electro before yeah, this. Right, almost fixed yeah. the sins of their past. <laughs> it's so, like, it it did it so well. And I would argue it's actually more impressive than both Endgame and maybe even Infinity War. Because whereas Endgame and Infinity War, everyone's contractually obligated to be there because it's all <laughs> under Papa Disney. Yeah, I, yes. You know, whereas this is like, we're pulling... Hey, Willem Dafoe, uh, do you want to be in this? Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, that's the Alfred thing. Alfred Molina, do you want to be in this? Yes. Yeah. You're pulling characters from decades ago to not only agree, re-agree to do their thing, but from different studios mm-hmm. and from all of, like, the amount of yeses this yeah. movie had to get in order to get made is unreal to me. Whereas... Avengers Infinity War, everyone's contractually obligated yeah. to be there for whatever duration they're they're required to be there for. <laughs> this was like, hey, do you all feel passionate about this project? And everyone's like, yes, let's do it. The only thing that I can think that they could do to top this now with like Secret Wars or something is if they somehow managed to get Tobey Maguire to come back, uh, Hugh Jackman to come back. Yeah, like, right. Like pull from all of the Marvel stuff. Yeah. That's the only way I could see them topping yeah. this. And Right. And, and, and that's from a pure like escalation standpoint. I think yeah. there, there are ways that from a narrative writing standpoint you can make it work yeah. you know like i think yeah because well i think we all agree this movie had no. narrative problems yeah absolutely but you know <laughs> and and the second like deadpool crosses over into like with, yeah. the second he pauses <laughs> you know the next thor movie and he's like hold on this is pretty cringeworthy isn't it <laughs> hey 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 axe come here or whatever you know then the audience will freak out that's deadpool or whatever that'll be cool and fan servicey and whatever but like this was so exciting and so unique and so interesting. Yeah, it had a lot of narrative problems. Even I, like, I recognize <clears> it. But I, even me, I'm willing to overlook those because of how 
well executed all the cameos callbacks all of that stuff was while still achieving a narrative arc i didn't foresee them doing great power comes great responsibility like I, that was yeah. like <laughs> they tricked us into watching a three movie yeah. spider-man origin or just, which, which again as a guy who like i study <clears throat> this i know the beats that are coming yeah. before they even come that even i'm like oh whoa that i didn't see that one coming that was cool. Oh, you're doomed <laughs> yeah right i'm like oh geez cool <clears throat> uh willem dafoe was amazing as always yeah okay yep. cool uh, multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness. Uh, great ideas, ruined execution, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> this was... Oh, I was so excited about this movie. Same. I was so excited. And I was so let down by it. So let down. Yeah, let, let's take all the character development that Wanda's had and throw it out the window. Let's... Was there anything of substance anywhere? Like... Hey, America Chavez, you're going to be an important character, but you're just a MacGuffin. You have yeah. no character development. We don't explore you at all. Hey, Benedict Cumberbatch, you've gone through this whole arc, but now we're just going to regress you a bunch and you're just a grumpy old man again. Like, Yeah, you're salty that your ex-girlfriend moved on. Yeah, like, hey, <clears throat> we're going to open up this multiverse to you and use none of it. Yeah. Hey, we're going to introduce the X-Men and use none of it. Like, so much went wrong with this one here's here's what i did like i liked sam raimi like, getting to do his sam raimi I, thing yeah i liked playing spot the sam raimi in this one where i'm like oh that's evil dead oh that's spider-man he's he's doing the doc ock from spider-man 2 that's fun i liked okay. the x-men animated series theme yeah right yeah there were moments where it was like spot the like thing and i'm like oh i like spotting the thing about you know like Oh, I'm Sam Raimi getting to do his Sam Raimi-isms where I'm like, an eye's going to pop out. I'm going to do a spinning camera thing. You know, Wanda popping out and doing her, like, horror yeah. stuff. Like, some of the horror elements that were in here worked really well. Because I'm uh, like... The music battle, I thought, was genuinely inspired. Music battle was yeah. really... Like, again, cool... A couple of cool ideas here. Horrible execution. Oh, yeah. like what, like, man? Yeah, it, I would say... Just from the ambition of it, yeah. I, I we have established that that gets you points. Yeah. I would put this at the top of D. Okay. And at that point, I would move Incredible Hulk down to E. Okay, that's fine. That's like, fair. Trying to write this bell curve a little bit. It's. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, try, I'm trying to think if I can justify. Yeah, it, it is very ambitious. It, yeah, and, and more than Ant Man and the Wasp and stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, but again. The hype was so real for this thing. And and How, remember when everyone was like talking, oh, is Tom Cruise gonna show up as Iron Man? Right. Is Magneto in this movie? Right. Well, and and the thing is, on one hand, like, and I'm trying to like judge this my personal hype and disappointment removed from it. Mm -hmm. But again, like, there are so many narrative holes in this that is uh, as the the movie guy, as the lore guy, just were painful. Like Hey, you guys are friends. Talk about it. Hey, instead of using a bunch of, like, magic circles to create a force field, you have literally any number of magic things that you can do outside of, I yeah. create shields. Like, there was so... Everyone regressed so far, lost all character progression that had happened, and even powers... I forgot that I had powers that do these things. And so and, I can punch so hard it breaks the multiverse. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. right. And, and like Wanda's like I suddenly have all these powers, and Doctor Strange is like I can only make laser whips. Like, like okay. And America yeah. Chavez is completely short shrifted, and this <clears> and that. Like yeah, D fine. Yeah. I, I might have put it in an E, but I'll give you a D. That's fine. I'm good with that. Yeah. Again, purely because yeah. of the ambition. Of it, it. it is very okay. ambitious. Okay. Thor, Thor Love, Love and Thunder. And Thunder. <laughs> we, we've talked about this very briefly yep. off camera, and we wanted, we wanted to save it for this. Thor Love and Thunder, in my opinion, is two really good movies combined into one mediocre movie. Yep. Because they it could have gone one of two directions. They should have either really leaned into gore and the whole idea that, oh, gods mm -hmm. are a problem and well, we our main character's a god. We need to confront this. Yep. And that could have been one direction. Really great story there. Or it could have been the quirky, weird, romantic comedy mm -hmm. with Mighty Thor and the cancer subplot yeah. and the sentient hammers kind of representing yeah. their relationship. Yep. And that would have also been a great, very different movie. Yep. Which, you know, Taika Waititi came in with Ragnarok and was like, here's a completely different Thor movie. What yep. if we had gotten another completely different Thor movie? Yep. And together they don't work. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I Again, I would put this in D. I would too. Uh, I, here's the thing, walking out of the theater, I liked it, I thought, I, like, yeah, I, that's weird, I walked out of this too and was I, like, Thor, this was good. I, I, I liked it because it made me laugh. Yeah. 
but it's also one of those movies that, like it was it was like candy where i i swallowed it i was like oh that was sweet and then i promptly was I like got oh, indigestion like, yeah and then it like made me a little bit sick and i'm like oh that that wasn't that good like i thought you know ha the funny hammer do funny thing like i thought that you know his relationship with his hammer was funny i thought the a couple of moments with him and his relationship with jane was fine um I thought Gore the God Butcher was interesting. But like you said, nothing congealed into something that made sense, yeah. right? Like, and again, this is one of those moments where there are interesting ideas that never come to fruition. The whole opening of the movie is Thor is a cocky jerk of a god who, in order to save this civilization, destroys it, right? He destroys yeah. this, like, ancient shrine, like, giant building, whatever, in the opening scene of the movie. And... So you're setting up this theme of like, hey, gods are kind of ignoring the people that they're supposed to take care of, which is the whole point of Gore the God Butcher. Yeah. And that's what they and they do a good job of setting him up. Like the setup of act one of this is like, OK, I see where this is going. Then they insert the cancer subplot. And it's like, OK, like this doesn't fit super well into that. And then they just drop it all. And it just becomes that. And then they go to God City. Which opens up a lot of weird issues, I think, in this world of mm -hmm. gods and superheroes and prompts a lot of questioning, which doesn't the Black go explored. Panther God is in that, which yeah. is weird because we've seen them interact with the real world. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it, it asks a lot of questions that are like, uh huh? It, yeah, it, this, it felt, this one felt sloppy. And I think that maybe yeah. that's the way to put it, is it felt sloppy and messy in a way that created a lot of ripple problems for everything around it. Mm -hmm. while also not delivering anything of substance in the movie itself, right? The fact that Gore, again, is just reduced to, hey, he, guy with a point, and who, again, Thor agrees with, basically, where he goes As to God City yeah. and he's like, hey, Zeus, you're a jerk. Like, I'm going to kill you. And it's like, okay. You know, like, they're on the same team at that. Like, Gore and Thor agree. Nothing ever comes of it. Nothing changes. Yeah. And so it's frustrating. The, this is the messy. movie that got you and I to talk. Like, are they in trouble? Yeah. This like, is the one. I, this is the movie where we were like, Marvel's in trouble. Yeah. I think this is the one that got a lot of people to think, like, hey, yeah, they're, <laughs> you've fallen off. Uh, Multiverse of Madness, better or worse? I would say Multiverse of Madness is better. <laughs> uh, only, mo mostly because at least like, that had a coherent theme. Yeah. As opposed to Thor: Love and Thunder being two movies mashed into one. Yeah. I'll put that there. Sure. Yeah. No, sure. Cool. All right. Uh, okay. So, ah, but this one made me laugh a little bit. This one made me laugh a little bit. This one had pizza balls. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. it did have pizza balls. It did have pizza balls, and I'm like, yeah. Is this is this funny? Is this humor? Is is this a joke? Uh, uh, Wakanda Forever. Tough uh, one. I uh, can you talk about this one? Okay. Um, I think I break from most people here. I did not enjoy this movie. Sure. Almost that's, at all. That's fair. Um, that's fair. I thought everything with Namor was great. I love Namor. Namor, great, great character. Wow, it's almost like it's a villain with a point, and who's, you know who's right? Who is absolutely right? Mm. Like, hey, can you not bother us? <laughs> hey, hey, everyone, hi, just me popping up from the ocean, being like, can, can you just not? Thanks. And also talking about Namor. <laughs> I'm so fired up about this Space Force <laughs> stuff because again, it's a villain with a point. Who agrees with stupid Wakanda as like, hey, because Wakanda's like, we're isolationists. We don't want to deal with the rest of the world, so don't bother us. And everyone's like, okay. But then as soon as Namor's like, hey, we want to be isolationists too. Don't bother what? us. Let's be isolationists together. Right. <laughs> and then Wakanda's like, we have a problem with this. Yeah. And it's like, no, you are vilifying them for the exact. And again, there could be an interesting story there around like, hey. What does it mean to be isolationist? What is good versus bad isolation? Like, why is this version bad and this version good? Or, yeah. Like, explore there, yeah. any of that. But no. Yeah, uh, I also, I didn't think any of Shuri's character arc was earned for her. Oh my gosh, no. And it, it frustrated. If they were going to lean into, like, her doing the whole grieving thing. Yeah. <laughs> the whole grieving the, 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 thing? I, uh, but, like... <laughs> That was phrased weird. It was. But, like, they didn't. No, no, they didn't. No, they, it's, like, it's not. I, it's not there. Where I thought they were going in that final battle where she was, like, about to kill 
mm-hmm. Namor instead of the here's a, a the Paul Walker AMV of of T'Challa. Yeah. Uh, instead of doing that, what I thought they were gonna do is have like a hand come in from mm-hmm. off shoulder mm-hmm. and like be on her shoulder. Yeah. Uh-huh. Off, off, from off camera, yeah, sure. on her shoulder. Yeah. Clearly, it's supposed to be T'Challa. And right. Like when she like moves her he- her yeah, head towards it, yeah. it's the wind. Yeah. Sure. Like what her mother said earlier. I feel him Set in the up. wind. Yes. Uh huh. Makes sense. I thought that was where they were gonna go, and then Setting she was just up. like, "Nope." Yeah. No. I am not going to kill you, Namor. Yeah. We are friends now. Yeah. Right. It. I was very disappointed in this movie, and well, apparently, I, we are in the minority here. Well, I, I think I, here's the thing. I think in the immediate aftermath of a lot of these movies you can't be honest about a lot of the movies mm-hmm. because the public discourse kind of decides the direction that you can go. And then, like, a year or two later, it's like, oh, we can talk about this now. Like, I think a lot of people had problems with Endgame a year after Endgame came out, right? And they're like, oh, and we can finally talk about this now. <laughs> um, I think with Wakanda Forever, every review I've seen of it has to start with, hey, this was an impossible task to make because, yeah. to you know, Chadwick because Boseman. of Chadwick yeah. Boseman's loss and this and that. And it's tragic, and he was such a talented actor. But, and, and, and like... Five minutes into this, you finally get into, like, the review, and then even then you have to kind of attenuate, like, was it good, was it not? You know, like, this one's so burdened with a lot of other considerations that everyone always has to qualify it. But if you remove all of that and just talk about it as a movie, I agree with you. Shuri doesn't have a satisfying character arc, and also, to be honest, like, doesn't earn the Black Panther thing to the extent that, like, a Koi, like... Why, why not a, or, or why not Okoye? Yeah. yeah, or literally, literally there are other characters. Right, there are literally like two or three other characters in this thing that would be better. Uh, Okoye, Nakia, yep. or Mbaku. All yep. three of them. Or Mbaku, yeah, absolutely. Like, all of them deserved it yep. more than Shuri. And so in Shuri's like, and it's me. And it's like, oh. So they went with like the least interesting, also most unearned of any of yep. them. Which so, was a real bummer for me to see. Um, also, again... I think a lot of this was hampered by the need to set up stuff. So, yeah. hey, we have Power Ranger Iron Man up here, and we have... Check out Midnight Angels on Disney Plus yeah, and, in three years. Like, I, like yeah. really? Like, really? And, it's, and it doesn't even look good. And then you have uh, a Koye bug suit, where they even make fun of... Is it... No, who, who, get, who becomes bug suit? Uh, blue. Uh, yeah, that's Okoye. It's, it's Okoye, Okoye, right? Okoye yeah. and, and the, right? the, okay. new, the new character played by that actress whose name... Uh, Michaela Ironheart, right? Oh, oh, oh! We're talking about different Iron no. people. Well, no. So there's <laughs> Ironheart, which is the Power Ranger one, right? And then oh, there's, I see. And then yeah, I, I was mixing it up with the other colorful <laughs> Iron Man armor. Yeah, no, the other color, colorful Iron Man armor. That one's Midnight Angel. And Midnight then, Angel. That's yeah. it. Which none of them were great. None of them yeah. really made sense. None of them were really warranted. Also, I love the fact that the movie outright makes fun of the fact that like it looks awful. This looks awful. <laughs> Oh, but it's supposed to look awful, so it, it, it goes to the She-Hulk problem we talked about where it's yeah, like, it's like, but it's bad, though. Yeah, like, if you're acknowledging that yeah. it's bad, then fix it. Okay. Like, instead of making a joke about it. Okay. Yeah, I would put this in E. Wow. Wow. I did not enjoy this. Wow. I, I, I remember, I, I was here. Yeah, no, when, you, when, when you I saw it, it and us, I yeah. came back and I was like, Marvel has a problem. Yeah. I, when I put it in E. I can be talked up to D. I was going to say, I, I would put it... I put it in like here ish. I would put it there. Would you knock Iron Man two down to put it there? Yeah, I could put Iron Man two down. Sure. That's fine. I'm fine. With that, that. that was like a question for you. Would you? No, I, I, <laughs> to I keep I, the bell curve. No, I could to keep your bell curve absolutely. The I mathematically could, perfect bell curve. <laughs> sure, I could do that for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it like it just went great. Uh, you went great. Okay, Quantumania, last one. Quanti- Most yeah, uh, yeah, so this just came out, and we just talked about it. It's yep. hard to judge these honestly. Yeah. So coming out of it. It's not an Ant Man movie. Is, yeah, is the no. biggest problem. Like yeah, Ant Man movies are cute, small scale heists. This is epic scale. Let's do you know big CGI fest battle, whatever. And that's not Ant Man. That's not Ant Man. Yeah, it is not an Ant Man movie. No. Uh, that's the first. The first thing I thought coming out of this was, man, that was an interesting Star Wars movie. Yeah, right. Like, sure. That was a fun. I I, I liked the creative sci fi ideas as is the theme. Uh, yeah. I don't like trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible. Sure. Yeah, I interesting choice for what they did with Kang mm-hmm. at the end. Yeah, um, I'm interested to see where that goes. I think I think it was just a a, a a a surprising choice to start this new phase and also start this like new exciting 
era of the arc and the big bad villain yeah. the, with an Ant-Man movie. Like, Ant-Man <laughs> has not proven himself to be, like, the big budget go-getter yeah. franchise because he is small scale. Literally and figuratively, he is an ant. Uh, and so this idea of, like, this is the one that's going to kick off the next epic adventure... I don't want that out of an Ant-Man movie. And I don't think Ant-Man as a character, or Paul Rudd as a character, is that guy. He is not that guy. He he is a supporting character, or he works in smaller scale. Yeah. It's not like, it's for the same reason you wouldn't put, like, a Daredevil to fight Kang. It's like, no, Daredevil is yeah. not that style of hero. Ant-Man is not that style of hero. <clears throat> and, and so this gets weighed down by a lot of... All- a yeah. lot of that baggage. I, so uh, what I would do, I like this about the same as the original Ant-Man. They are two completely different genres. I would put it right below it. So right in the middle of C. Really? That high? Because for me, I think... I mean, did you like it as much as Ant-Man and the Wasp? Because like, I look at what I'm comparing it against, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm like, I didn't like... I'm not playing enough. Um, yeah. yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I didn't like it as much as Ant-Man. Like... Ant-Man and the Wasp felt more cohesive as a story. It was an Ant-Man movie as well. Oh, right, and it yeah. was an ant And so if I'm directly okay. comparing these, I'm like, did I like, in this little group of fail, <laughs> uh, what is the ones that I like the most? Did I like this one better than... Out, out of the, those three, I would like, I liked it the most. At least it... Yeah, I, that's it, fair. No, no, go it, for it. It... It wasn't an Ant-Man movie, but what it was trying to be, it yeah. did fine. Yeah, it did fine. Which, which, yeah, and they definitely changed the ending. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, yes. it's kind of weird. Yes, okay, so then this one, move down to there. Yeah. So keep your bell curve. Sure. <laughs> sure. So, all right, no, so okay. here is the... <laughs> Unless you want to move <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp up. Uh, no, I, I think we can settle here. Okay, so there's your bell curve, sir. Indeed. Do you feel good about that? Any any last minute changes? Uh. I mean, if, if, if this was my tier list, yeah. there would be changes, but sure. I think the fact that this is two people with yeah. apparently exactly the same opinions on most things. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah, fair. <laughs> no, I, I think this is about oh, as settled as it's going to be. Yeah. I, first of all, mm-hmm. what? No other franchise has done this, first of all. That yeah. is impressive in and of itself, even with all of its failures. Right, yeah. No, totally. Uh, I think that the biggest, you're right, and I agree. I think the concerning thing is all the failure. Like, if you look at the bottom of the list. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's all newer. It's all, like, it's like new, old stuff, and you're, you're falling off a little mm-hmm. bit. Outside of, like, a couple of random ones down here. But this, like, this chunk, this even this chunk of four. Yeah. Chunk of five, if you add that guy. Like the fact that it was back to back to back to back to back it hurts. Lower tier. Last last stuff. last time I talked about the or I, or I guess it was earlier this one too. I talked a little bit about the YouTube programming and how you have to yeah. like balance out oh your like God. your your bangers with not so bangers and the fact that YouTube is a game of like are you rising or are you falling right? That's that's kind of how there's this ebb and flow with yeah. YouTube channels of like are the numbers going up or are they going down and. You know, to stay sustainable on the platform, you have to kind of, like, ride this, like, middle ride of, like, yeah, I'm going up and down. I'm just kind of, like, coasting. Um, here, if I, if this is a programming thing, you know, your last couple videos have been, like, nines and tens in that top ten list. Yeah. Which sends your, your system down, which is when you start getting it's the, like, great. critical essays and this and yeah. that. So, that's a concern. Um, yeah. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The definitive, de facto answer for what is the best Marvel movies and what are the worst Marvel yeah, go movies. Go edit Wikipedia. Do it. Yeah, go forth, edit Wikipedia, fill it in with uh, all of our definitive opinions. You're welcome. Um, now you can go out and win every film argument ever. So, thank you guys so much for watching our very long uh, extended thoughts <laughs> on our tier list. This is going to be a short one. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> right out the door. Totally fine. Two parter. Of course it is. And as always, friends, we'll see you in the next upload. Remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. Video for you. See ya!